God bless you. Thank you for tuning in uh, to our streaming live Bible class, Bible study. How many know that uh, Wednesday we need that over the hump day that can uh, energize us. We need to be fueled to continue for the rest of the week. Uh, Wings of Love members, God love you and so do I. And I hope that all is well with you and your family. We ought to praise God that uh, many of us have not been affected by the coronavirus, but uh, we are praying for the grieve, for those who are grieving and bereaved uh, in your loss. You know, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Lord, always have a purpose in what uh, he is doing within and through our lives. Certainly we are praying uh, for those who are on the front line and we are praying, amen, for this election as well. And most importantly, get out and vote. Get your souls to the polls. If you're not going to go to the polls, send in your absentee ballot. This is important. We need you, particularly those who are 18 and up, to get out and vote. Tonight, we want to talk about the transforming power of God's truth. The transforming power of God's truth. There are two passages of scripture that I'd like you, you to, uh, to notice and to pay close attention to on tonight. And I pray that uh, in your leisure, you would read it again and muse over it and meditate upon it. Our first uh, passage of scripture is in the Old, T, the Old Testament, the book of Psalm. Psalm 25 and verse 5, Psalm 25 and verse 5, it reads thus, lead me in thine truth. Pay close attention to truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Our next passage of scripture is in the New Testament, the NT, the gospel recorded by St. John, the 8th chapter, verses 31 and 32. The gospel recorded by St. John, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. It reads thus, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Verse 32, play, pay close attention to this. And ye shall know the truth, the truth, the truth, and the truth, the truth, the truth shall make you free. I want to discuss, want to talk about on tonight, and I believe that this is imperative and important. The transforming power of God's truth. And tonight how we understand truth affects how we think. There are many different opinions, ideals, views, thoughts, and concepts of what truth is. It affects what we know. It affects how we perceive the world around us. It affects how we behave towards others. Be truthful with yourself. Now listen tonight. Stop lying to yourself. Stop kidding yourself. If you need a checkup from the neck up and you toe up from the flow up, admit it. If there are some hellish habits and if there are some polluted practices in your life, if there is some corrupt conduct, admit it. Stop lying to yourself. Stop kidding yourself. Be true to yourself. Listen now. Or truthful with yourself and with others. Don't lie. Don't even make provisions. Don't do anything where you have to lie. Because if you tell one lie, you're going to have to tell another lie. And so the Bible tells us to speak truth one ye with another. It affects who our friends are. Now let me say this tonight. Pastor just going to be, be honest. Pastor Jay going to be honest. 
I need a friend that's going to be truthful with me. I don't need a friend that's going to lie. Tell me the truth. If there is something wrong with me, tell me the truth. We still going to be friends. I appreciate real friends. I don't need no friends that's, that's lying because mother said, uh, if you if you lie, you steal. If you steal, you lie. So I, I need I need I need to be real. I need to be genuine. Tell me the truth, because birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> People who you hang around with, you got to be careful, because you will adopt their characteristics. It affects how we live our lives, and it affects how we die. Listen, we need to know tonight. Who we believe in, what we believe in. Don't you miss this. You need to put this down. And why we believe. You remember I told you earlier there are many ideals, views, and thoughts and concepts of what truth is. And so you need to be certain. You need to be sure of what you, watch this, believe in, who you believe in, why you believe. Some people look at truth tonight as a threat to their person, position, and property, and so they don't want to hear the truth. Let's admit it. None of us really want to hear the truth. Some people ignore it. Some people avoid it. Sometimes tonight, the truth hurts. The truth hurts. When I have to tell the truth on Sunday, when we were in this building, don't you know the truth cut the giver and the receiver? But it also helps. Though sometimes the truth hurts, it helps if we receive it tonight with an open mind and heart. Don't miss this. You need to put this down. We want truth on our side. Let me pump up the volume. But don't want to be on the side of truth. This come with rewind on this wonderful Bible study, Bible class night. We want truth on our side, but don't want to be on the side of truth. Listen tonight. Truth is a fact or belief that, ex that is accepted as true. Truth is a fact or belief that is accepted as true. Truth is conformity to knowledge or logic, to reality, what really is, to actuality, what actually exists. Can I teach tonight? Truth is the opposite of falsehood, falsehood and lies. Truth is honesty and integrity. Since a lot of you ain't in, is not in school, I, you know, I'm just a preacher. I'm not a teacher. My wife is an educator. <laughs> but let me share this with you. Mathematical truth or mathematics is the study of number, form, arrangement, and associated relationships using rigorously defined literal, numerical, and operational symbols. I know young people peek this out. Millennials, you don't want to, you know, I don't like math. I, I, it was rough for me, too, <laughs> in math. But listen, mathematical truth, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, help one to know how to count mathematical truth. Number two, philosophical truth or philosophy is the investigation of cause and laws underlying reality. I like Plato. I like to read Aristotle. I like to read Socrates and Shakespeare. And when you read their philosophy, even Confucian, it can provoke your thinking. Thirdly, scientific truth or science is learning 
or study concerned with, watch this, demonstrable truths or observable phenomena. On Saturday, there was a show that come on called Exploration. And I said, let me turn it. Let me turn it. I don't want to. I don't want to. Then I, I, ended up, I, I, I went back to look at it. And it, it, it showed a tree, how the tree loses its chloral. And it turns yellow and, and orange and brown. I mean, it was, it, it was, it was mind-provoking. Science. Exploration. Discoveries and inventions. Tonight, take you into an area where you've never been. When we look at space, when we think about the men who go up, they said they go to the moon. Uh, okay, well, that's good. Grammatical truth or grammar, the study of language as a systematically composed body of words that exhibit discernible regularity of structure. When I was in William Tyndall College, you had to take a test in order to see where you were at in terms of grammar and English. It's important. You know, some people say, I want to speak French. I used to want to speak French, the love language. I used to want to speak Spanish. I even got a little a book where I can look at the different Spanish terms. But let me tell you, you need to know how to speak plain English. <laughs> English, literature, letters, words, sentences, paragraphs, helps one to read. I used to have uh, my son, Alvin Earl Jackson Jr., read the newspaper. It was important to me and my wife that my children would learn how to read so there are no signs and things of this nature. Listen, the operation of mathematics, the investigation of philosophy, the experimentation or observation of science, the examination of grammar is good. You need this for your intellect, for the mental aspect of your life. Hear me good. You need it for your intellect. You need it for the mental aspect of your life. However, in order to per, uh, persevere, endure during this pandemic, in the midst of problems and misfortunes, we need the transformation of God's biblical truth, that which pertains to the Bible. Listen, God's truth will be a blessing and a benefit to all of us mentally, emotionally, Watch this. Spiritually, psychologically, listen to me real good. God's truth will be a blessing and benefit to us holistically. Some books are, you can put this down, are for inspiration. Others are for information. Information. But the Bible tonight is for transformation. Let's look at this term, transform. Repeat after me tonight, transform, transform. It means to change markedly the form, character, or appearance of, especially for the better. How many have seen an ugly, hideous-looking caterpillar? But... Within that caterpillar is housed a beautiful butterfly. And that caterpillar goes through a metamorphosis, a transformation. 
It suggests the night to change the nature, function, or condition of. It means to convert. Let's look at transform and watch this, compound with transformation, which denotes any extreme or radical change. I want you to pay close attention to this tonight, a radical change. Tonight, we need a radical change, especially for the better. God's truth tonight has such an awesome power to transform. In other words, to bring about a spiritual metamorphosis, watch this, in the hearts of people from all walks of life. This transforming power is for everybody. God's truth has the power to break the spiritual shackles that restrict our freedom. His truth emancipates us from our bondage to sin, listen, and Satan's lies. Let me say that again, Satan's lies. Matter of fact, St. John 8, 8 chapter, verse 44, says that he's the father of lies. There's no truth in him. Satan won't tell the truth, can't tell the truth. Satan is a liar. God's truth allows us leeway breathing room, elbow room, and space amid the crowd of dishonesty and falsehood in our society. Jesus said in St. John 8, 31, 32, if ye continue, don't stop, keep going, in mind, my word, my saying, my parables. Then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know, know, know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Okay, pastor, I'm listening, streaming live. Free from what? I'm glad you asked. Free from guilt. Shame, self-condemnation, and most importantly, from spiritual death. Jesus alone has and actually is the truth. Jesus said in St. John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth. And the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you come any other way, you come like a thief and a robber. He is the perfect standard of right. As truth, my Lord and Savior expounds to us tonight spiritual realities in his life and words and death and resurrection. He is the very wisdom of God. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. This is important tonight. No man is free unless he accepts himself for what he is and can become. Let me say that again. No man, woman too, is free unless he or she accepts him or herself for what he or she is and can become. Listen tonight. Don't y'all miss this. <laughs> there can be no awareness or no freedom, rather, without Awareness and acceptance of his truth. Let me say that again. There can be no freedom without awareness and acceptance of his truth. Because there are some folk who live the day think that there are, are. There is no absolutes. Listen, philosophy says, think your way out. Science says, invent your way out. 
Legislators say, legislate your way out. Politicians say, spend your way out. Government says, socialize your way out. Goop, 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 goop. Liquor says, drink your way out. Tobacco says, smoke your way out. Some of our young people would say, doing drugs, molly, blunt, is the way out. Psychiatrist says, talk your way out. Money says, buy your way out. Industry says, work your way out. But watch this. Satan says, there is no way out. Don't listen to that liar. Do not listen to that liar. Satan is a liar. He will tell you that it never, it's never going to get better. You're never going to come out of this. You're never going to be healed. You never get a job. The money is never going to come. I ain't going to never get a hug. I ain't going to never get a I can just go on and on. Stop listening to a liar. Jesus said, I am the way out. Listen now. The truth to know within. I am the life to go out and live. He is the living truth. He is truth in a body. Let me say that again. He's truth walking around when he's here on planet Earth, walking around in sandals. He is truth in a body. He is the living truth. Tonight, truth is hard for us to grasp, not because it's complicated. It isn't. But mostly because truth, you need to put this down, must be lived to be learned. Truth must be lived to be learned. Truth will always be truth regardless of lack of understanding, belief, disbelief, or ignorance. Truth is truth whether you believe it or not. Even when you go to court, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but truth, so help you God? I do, I do. Don't you know you can go to jail for perjury, <laughs> for lying? It must remain constant and uncompromised. Let me tell you, God bless the life of John Lewis. And John Lewis said, if you see that something is not right and that something is wrong, speak up. Say something. In other words, what John Lewis really saying, speak up, say something, stand up for the truth. Let me say that again. Stand up for the truth. They are going to laugh at you, talk about you, make fun of you, but it don't matter. Stand up for the truth. I know you're saying, Pastor, why are you so loud? Because I want you to get this tonight. Stand up. For the truth, when blended with error, truth ceases to be truth, and a slippery substitute swallows it up called deception. Let me say that again. Deception. We live in a day of deception. Watch this. This provoked my thinking. Things are not what they appear to be. Think for a minute. Investments are not what they may seem to be. So-called opportunities are not what they may look to be. Don't miss this. People are not what they may claim to be. <laughs> this has in turn created for us a world down here on this planet of make-believe where many accept the false for the true, the imitation for the genuine, and the artificial for the authentic. I think I said something there. All too often, many things that may appear to be good, listen, young people, peep this out. Listen to Pastor Jay. They may appear to be good, are in reality bad, right, are in reality wrong, a blessing, are in reality a curse, pure, are in reality corrupt, 
honest are in reality crooked, safe, but in reality it's dangerous. You need to know this tonight during this pandemic before we come out of it. We live in a society of synthetic and plastic people. This comes with rewind on tonight. We live in a society of synthetic and plastic people. Let me bring it close to your couch. Let me bring it in your living room. Let me bring it in the den. Let me bring it in the bedroom. Let me bring it to the prison cell or in the hospital. People are pretenders, play actors, fake and phony. They appear to be true, but they are really false. Deception comes in various shapes, sizes, colors, methods, and manners. That's why I felt that it was important tonight to talk about the transforming power of God's truth. We need it. God's truth has, is always right. We cannot allow his truth to be watered down. Let me tell you, when I preach, I'm going to preach the truth. I had a man walk up to me, and I think he was a, a, a Muslim. He told me, he said, Pastor, I see it. You know, continue to preach the truth. That's all I know to do is preach the truth. Pilate asked the question, what is truth? Pilate should have known that truth was standing right there in his presence. Jesus, as I forementioned, is the living truth. He's truth in a body. And he's asking the question, what is truth? Jesus, during his day and time here on this planet, spoke truth to power. That's what we must do. Black Lives Matter and others, they are speaking truth to power. Watch this. Jesus not only spoke truth to power, he was, watch this, truth standing before the powers that be. Oh, watch this. You, you may ask tonight, where can I find it? How can I experience it? Truth can be found in God's word because his word is truth. Don't miss this. Jesus is truth in a body, but also God's truth is in the Bible. Listen, the Bible does not contain the truth. The Bible is God's truth. Let me tell you something. God is truth, and God cannot lie. Listen to the priestly prayer in the 17th chapter of St. John, verse 17. Jesus prayed to the Father, sanctified them. I don't know about you. Lord, purify me. Separate me in the truth. Sanctify them by the truth. Don't miss this. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. The written word is truth. Don't you know that's why the devil don't want you to get in the word? He don't want you to hear the truth because he know that if you hear the truth, that's going to be a radical change in your life, and in your living. You can experience the transforming power of God's truth through the anointing and aid of the Holy Ghost. For he is, watch this, the indwelling truth, the Holy Spirit wants to live within us, to guide us into all truth. When you are, watch this, born again. We don't even talk about born again in the church no more. Well, I'm talking about it tonight. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be 
born again. Marvel not, you must be born again. You cannot understand spiritual things through a natural nature, not through your Adamic nature. Only way you can understand the spiritual things of God on this wonderful Wednesday night, you need the spirit of God. You need to be born from above. You need the holy, holy Hagios, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost to give you illumination of God's revelation. I think something was said right there. Oh, hallelujah. Tonight I feel his power. You need the illumination of the Holy Ghost to give you understanding of God's revelation. Jesus taught this, he said, when he, he, the masculine gender, when he, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. I missed y'all last Wednesday. I didn't get a chance to sit down and have Bible class, Bible study with you, but I'm back on the night. Listen, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, repeat after me, the spirit of truth. Let me say this as a footnote. When the end times come and many are taken up in the rapture and those who are left back here in the tribulation, let me tell you, the restrainer, the restrainer, which is the Holy Ghost, when he is taken out of here, they are going to believe a lie. The Antichrist is going to come with lying wonders. I better put that as a footnote and insert. He's going to come with lying wonders, with miracles, and they are going to, going, going to believe him, thinking that he is the, the anointed one, because they do not have the Holy Spirit to give them guidance and direction during that time. Listen to what he said. He said, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide, guide you into all truth. Not a portion, not some, not a little, but all truth. The Holy Spirit confirms God's word to us. I'm just about finished. His word alone reveals to us the origin of our universe, the creation of mankind, and the consummation of all things. Listen, this book that I have before me and perhaps that you're looking at or even on your iPhones or iPad, I'm letting you know tonight, this book, excuse me, I got a little excited. It is holy revelation and not just simple speculation. I think something was said there. Absolute facts and not just pet theories. Listen. And eternal truth. And not just mere fiction. Listen, God's truth. Let me tell you on tonight, the gospel truth. Repeat after me. The gospel truth reveals that the Savior of the world has come, that the plan of salvation has been completed, that the price of redemption has been paid, had been paid that the way to heaven is now open to whosoever will. It's in the book that everlasting life is now available to all who believe that the chains of sin have been broken and spiritual freedom is ours to enjoy. You know why so many are in bondage even in the church? It's because you will not accept the truth and you will always be in bondage when you learn how to accept the truth. I have accepted the truth about me. I'm bald-headed. <laughs> I don't have any hair on my head. Ain't no use of me lying, talking about, yeah, I got a head full of hair. That's a lie. You don't have any hair. You're bald-headed. I've just figured y'all want to laugh a little bit tonight. Watch this. Anybody that say they, they have not sinned, they're lying, and the truth is not in them. Listen, it's in the book that the power of Satan has been crushed and that we as Christians have power, hallelujah, power, power over him. The transforming power of God's truth reaches out to those who are sick of sinning, who are battling with temptation, who are broken in spirit, suffering in silence, and handicapped in your body. I'm on cruise right now, but I'm just about to land. It reaches out 
to all, to the pimp, to the prostitute. We have a lot of them around this church. The incarcerated, the, those who are incarcerated, and reach out to the stripper in the club. Well, someone can't go back to the club now. To the dope slinger, it reaches to the high and the low, the rich, the poor, the young and the old, the married and single, the learned and unlearned, the black, the red, the yellow, the white, all are precious in his sight. God's truth speaks to all people of all ages, no matter how, how old you are, how young, to all nationalities, to all generations. Listen, all races, God's truth can go into every place. If people would only listen to the truth and not just listen to it, apply it to your life. And if people would take time of all colors, and races to apply the transforming power of God's truth to their lives. Listen to this. Listen closely. Racial strife would cease. Wouldn't you agree? And moral lifestyle would, lifestyles would change. Don't you agree? Political corruption would stop. Don't you agree? Hostile attitudes would discontinue. Marital relationships would be enhanced. Our educational system would be improved. Our educational system don't know what to do right now, whether to let the children go back to school or not. And criminal activity would be halted. So let me say this. If I get ready to draw to a close, you're asking the question, what should I do with it? This is what you should do with God's truth. Listen, we should accept it fully. Believe it entirely, study it thoroughly, value it highly, search it diligently, read it enthusiastically, regard it reverently. Why? Because God's power restores, revives, renews, trust it daringly, obey it wholeheartedly, practice it daily, and share it lovingly. His transforming power comforts me when I'm lonely. It'll do the same for you. Cheer me when I'm sad. It'll do the same for you. Sure me when I'm anxious. Strengthen me when I'm weak. Watch this. It even corrects me when Alvin is wrong. You too. Don't judge me. <laughs> Refresh me when I'm tired. Lift me tonight when I'm low. Humbles me when I get proud. Sustains me when I'm afraid encourages me when I am oppressed and thank God it revives me when my soul is weary. Now Psalm 25 verse 5 here it is I'm not making this up you know Psalm 25 verse 5 says lead me and how many tonight don't know what to do, which way to turn in the area of finance, in the area of your relationship, in the area of your marriage, in the area of your career, in the area of your investment. I don't know what to do and who to turn to. Lord, lead me tonight in thy truth. That's the first point I want to leave with you. Lead. Let him lead you into his truth. Got to be careful. There's a lot of uh, occult activity and the cult going on that leads you astray. Then he said, and teach me. Not only do you want him to lead you, number two, learn the truth. Remember I told you earlier, sometimes the truth hurt, but you got to learn it because that's the way you can be liberated and be free. Listen. For thou art the God of my salvation. You talking about being rescued. You talking about being delivered. Number one, let him lead you. Number two, learn. Number three, you ought to lean on him. Hallelujah. <laughs> and while you're leaning, listen. 
Let me say that again. While you're leaning, listen to what he say. How can I hear the truth, Pastor? Let me tell you, you need to hear it for what's going on today. Not only do you need to have the ears open that's connected to your head, you need to have the ears of your heart open where you can be sensitive to the voice of God. That's what Pastor Jay had prayed for in this time because there's so much calamity and commotion and confusion going on tonight. I feel the anointing and we need to attune ourselves to the voice of God so we know what truth is. You can't be on AM and God on FM. You got to be on the same station. Okay, I just want to leave with that. Lead me into thy truth. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation, and on thee do I wait all the day. Not only should you let him lead you, I'm closing, learn, lean and listen, look for it. Because let me tell you right now, what you're going through right now, it may be a fact that you sit, but the truth is, Oh, my God can heal your body. Oh, it's a fact tonight, Pastor, you're getting too excited. It's a fact that I don't have any money, but the truth is that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Oh, I'm in trouble right now, but I come to tell you, he said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So though I'm in trouble, it's a fact that I am in trouble. But the truth is that I am an overcomer. So look. Wait on him. Because you're getting ready to come out. That's the truth. Someone wrote, as I get ready to close, Thank you. I've enjoyed sharing with you what God has given to me. True forever on the scaffold. Wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold sways the future. I believe Martin Luther King and those who marched, they used this song. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. John Legend and Common Sing, when the glory comes. I just wanted to put that out there. Listen, he is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He have loosened, loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. Oh, oh. His truth is marching on. Come on, say it right where you're at. His truth, his truth, God's living truth, God's written truth, the power and anointing of the spirit of truth is marching on. Good night. God bless you. Sing with me. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Every head bowed, every eye closed. They got our Father, I thank you tonight for your divine, powerful, and transforming truth. The truth will stand, a lie will fall and be buried. We thank you, oh God, that you are the truth and that you cannot lie. And when everything else is falling, when everything else is decaying, when everything else is deteriorating, we are standing on your truth. For heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall stand forever. Help us to stay with your word. Help us to stand on your word. Help us to speak your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. There are three ways that you can give tonight, and it's on the screen. I appreciate your gift, your generosity. Thank you for your sacrifice. And I see God meeting your need. 
And we ought to give God praise that he have really been sustaining us during this pandemic. We're still able to eat. <laughs> and we're still able to have clothes on our back, roof over our head, transportation. Thank you tonight. God love you and so do I. <laughs>